What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we're taking a look at the patch notes for February 7th. This one is uh, pretty juiced. We've got some really cool events and a lot of them at that, uh, and a few other uh, really nice things, starting with the first one that I know a ton of people ha uh, have been looking forward to. We have the second Jatina uh, pen accessory available now to you, and it also revamps how it works previously as well so you no longer have to do quests for this there's an actual ui which you'll see by opening your inventory and just kind of clicking on the little uh button it looks along the lines of this guy right here so that you can actually get into exchanging them out or getting whichever piece that you want rather than doing quest line stuff items required to do it i'm sure you've seen uh <laughs> these increase in price especially the outrageous price of uh blackstone weapons but i made an absolute fortune selling the tens and tens and tens of thousands that I had stockpiled since they went to max price and like completely sold out. Uh, but you can see the the items that it takes um, to upgrade this one. It's got a little graphic that's a little more uh, detailed, I suppose, than just listing them out in a chart a little more easier to view. Anyway, it's a total of 18,000 weapon stones and it's weapons only in current iteration, not armor. So that's why you're seeing them sold out because everybody had to have them day one, evidently. Uh, but hey, I'll take advantage of it for sure. Uh, so you can get your uh, accessory. As far as swapping them out, uh, you don't have to do any quests. You're just going to acquire these items, right? You can just buy these. Uh, if you want to buy them, you can grind them out if you want to, and you're going to upgrade your item accordingly. That way, it's the same accessories as it was before. Crescent rings, narc earring, or tongue earring, your choice. These can be swapped an unlimited number of times. Uh, and if you were already started on the previous one, it does indeed convert over to the new format right away. So it will, if you haven't done either or you just started one, uh, the first accessory of this, um, you can just do this method and you're good to go and forget about the daily quests. They're no longer time gated for it in that regard. And if you did the first one forever ago, you can now do the second one because it exists. As far as it being unlimited number of times you can exchange it, it, it is unlimited. It's four times it's free. So you can swap it to a different accessory up to four times for free. After that, it's going to cost you um, the fifth exchange and above is going to cost you a little bit of uh, dough to pull that off it's going to take uh, uh what 200 mil uh gold bars to swap to another one after that if for whatever reason you just keep need needing to swap these all over the place so uh go forward enjoy your pens and yeah there you go so let's move over to events that are going on there's a lot of stuff that's in there they have dive into the guild league which we're going to talk about in the patch notes uh when we get to that section there is the new guild league which is a 15 v 15 um, format for your guildies to do. Uh, we'll dive into the specifics on the patch note portion, but the events, there's actually two that are running along with this. This one's kind of an offline event uh, where people can participate, make a YouTube video of their guild participating in it, um, and you can get uh, some decent rewards, a, a glory box um, uh, for just participating in making the video. There's another one um, that is, what are they calling the World Intense of intense battles with guild league uh if you just win um a few matches three matches i believe with your guild in it you're gonna get some pretty wild rewards as well as killing 500 uh getting to 500 total kills it gets you an outfit box and a 100 stack which is insanely good just a note to win a match it's first to 100 kills in the 15 v 15 so there's that um, and then each of you'll see the three wins in each of the victories. You're going to get cron stones and artisans, and it goes up uh, each time. Uh, then, of course, we also have participation rewards for if, I don't know, your guild just can't hang and win anything. <laughs> So there's also that. Uh, other events going on, you'll note that they kind of refresh the golden treasure chest uh, event that was in existence. Some people missed out on that because they killed the treasure chest before uh, getting the quest. So hopefully that's been fixed. It also does uh, respawn a, a notably a little bit faster than other ones. So they changed Rift bosses to respawn every seven days. This is supposed to be a bit faster, although it wasn't a specified exact amount. Uh, amount. We have an additional season ticket that went out, which was kind of surprising. And actually in, in line with that, it's a little bit better than just getting another ticket. Uh, they did get us some new rewards, whereas we didn't have these the last couple of season tickets that were given out. You can pick up a 150 stack. Um, if you had done each season, there were no rewards. I think the last three, but maybe it was only two. I can't remember. Uh, if you hadn't done them all, obviously, then you could still claim the older rewards. Uh, but now there's a new one added, which is awesome because uh, I always will use those stacks and they've got a uh, refresh on uh, some of the seasonal items to pick up there too so that it's not uh, uh, less interesting without the uh, extra bonus stuff available for you. Here's a new event that we have and this one's really interesting. It's called a chance to get cups. Functionally, you're just going to be able to grind for the shards basically at uh, various different grind zones and it's 
a lot of them, not every single one, but a whole lot. It uh, drops this jewel of imperfect power, which can be traded out one to one on any of the shards or uh, 200 uh, to one for a cup, which is the same as the shard exchange for it. Um, these seem to drop pretty commonly, uh, like extremely commonly. Uh, so we'll see how that impacts. It kind of makes sense that this is running alongside the release of the Jatina accessory to help people uh, get their cups without creating a giant bottleneck with people sell this, swap this, change this, whatever, all happening at the same time. So I get it, but it, um, it only lasts in two weeks. We'll see what kind of impact it has on the market long term. Notably, this does impact your income if you were uh, like orcs, uh, orcs slash Fogan make a cup grinder um, because these are going to be more available and much better grind zones from the other aspect of that can now make uh, those cups as well. So yeah, granted, it's only two weeks. So there is that. You get the idea. Uh, as far as the list of where you can grind, they've got a whole bunch in here. Obviously, I'm not reading through all of these, uh, but a lot of the uh, more popular spots are all included in this uh, along with it. So you can knock out just doing whatever you were going to grind and get it ahead. If you're working on your boots, Dark Seekers retreats in there. Um, almost all the Decky Lantern spots are in there. So yeah, it's it's uh, pretty pretty easy to just pick up some extra money for grinding what you were going to do anyways. Uh, what special reward awaits you? This is just the daily pass, which we'll see in the um, in the Pearl Shop when we get to that section here. Uh, they've changed it up. I see that they gave out much less Dim Origin of Dark Hunger, personally, since I like grinding Tungrad Ruins, and every time these come out, it impacts uh, the real, the good origin of Dark Hungers that exist uh, by a bit, although the real ones are way better than these are. Um, there's less, so there's that. But uh, they did change up a lot of the other rewards. Um, they have 120 stacking here as well as a 100. If you get the pass, uh, two outfits... Uh, that are in there a lot of cron stones and as you're going to see when we do get to the pearl shop they're pushing cron stones pretty heavily right now which isn't a terrible thing for anyone chasing things like debareka or otherwise igor batali's got a uh, little quest for you just when you log in open your challenge you're going to get this little pouch thing turn it into him he gives you an rng pouch and then you just rng it up we've got hot time going on bonus xp skill xp uh, another 50 percent drop rate running and that is running notably for three weeks so here we go. Uh, Scarecrow training XP plus 50% as well as you'll see that there's 10 hour books available in the Pearl Shop for 5 million silver each if you're on those Scarecrows. And then we've got a new fishing event with uh, Catch Plump Amberjacks in the Winter Sea. So there's the Plump Coelacanth, which are used to be the season fish, whatever, a, a few seasons ago. And now they're just uh, pretty regular on any server. And we also have a 3 mil fish that can be caught when you log in. Also open your Y tab and you will see that there is a uh, special fishing rod that lasts for a very, very, very long time uh, that you'll be able to use uh, throughout this in case you don't have like other ones, Balanos plus 10 or whatever. It lasts even longer than that. So that's it for the events. Let's jump on into our class changes this week. And we only have tweaks to Scholar, but they look pretty significant. Um, have to see from the Scholar mains how significant these are. But they changed the animation speed of virtually every skill or pretty much every skill, as you can see in this very, very long list across the board. And then they changed uh, some of the uh, self buffs off of certain skills, not to rem none were removed overall. They changed where they were. So for instance, potential energy, uh, had us in attack cast speed minus 20% for five seconds while it removed the DP buff that was on it. And then you'll see that the DP buff was then moved to core fusion. Um, and then in addition to moving some of those buffs around, uh, the flow golden thunder skill. Now it has a bigger AOE based on how high you jump down, which is interesting. Hammer spin picks up some HP recovery. Uh, along with it as well. So we'll see how Scholar shakes out. No flat uh, damage buffs, but uh, obviously animation speed increase also improves DPS sometimes more significantly than just a flat damage increase. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, moving on into other content updates. Here's the Guild League that we were talking about. I'll read the dev note on this because it's uh, pretty descriptive. Guild League content's been updated. It is PvP content where guilds compete in 15v15 battles. Once the league battle starts, guilds that have applied to participate will be uh, paired for matches and thereafter. Up to 15 guild members who wish to fight can participate in battle with the matched guild. This guild league's been prepared with a desire to make PvP more accessible and enjoyable. We understand that solo play can be intimidating. We want to highlight the importance of teamwork. We hope that the thrill of banding together with your guild makes coordinating your strategies and taking on guilds and yeah, 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 you get the deal there. So 15v15 that you can uh, sign up for. There is a ranking system along to this which uh, the initial iteration when they started talking about it, there wasn't going to be, that was later added in. Um, you can see the times there uh, for NA and EU. Uh, this is going to be NA uh, PT or Pacific time and EU. It's UTC uh, time. It's 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. weekdays and 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 
weekends is the times that you can queue up for it. Uh, something to note out of this, it's 10 to 15 minimum, meaning you could potentially get in with 10 people if you wanted to for it. In order to win, you get 1,000 points, which is 100 kills, or if that doesn't happen within the 20-minute time limit, then whoever has the higher score is then going to win. If it's tied, it's sudden death, next kill wins uh, at that point. Uh, first kill uh, awards 50 points as like a first blood kind of film, and every kill after that is 10 points, so functionally uh, 100 kills, but not entirely. To note, there is a penalty system along with this. You can get penalties uh, for it. And if you get three penalties, you get a one-week ban from the league entirely, which is interesting, especially because of how you can uh, accrue these in some scenarios. Um, for instance, you need 10 participants uh, from your guild before a match begins, or you get immediate defeat and you get a penalty. <laughs> so don't queue up unless everybody's ready to roll. If homie went to go grab a Mountain Dew and a bag of Doritos from his mom and he's taken too long and he was... I don't know, number 10 because you're going to queue up with less than 15, then enjoy your penalty, I guess. I hope that Doritos were worth it, so whatever. Uh, the rewards are actually uh, pretty nice, uh, especially considering it's a it's a 20 minute uh, time limit for it, which are here. So the winner's going to get uh, 200, uh, 200 million silver in uh, gold bars and then a whole bunch of consumables, whale tendon uh, potions, elixirs, perfumes. Um, essence, uh, the courage and gallantry and whatnot from there and a large amount of combat XP. Uh, the loser gets 100 mil in gold bars and then the same consumables, just less of them uh, in, in most cases, like the perfumes and stuff are three if you win and one if you lose and some combat XP, which like I said, it's pretty sweet for uh, the, the rewards in general, like 20 minutes of it to jump in and do some, what I assume gonna be pretty fun, 15 v 15 with your guild homies. Um, yeah, pretty cool and pretty pumped about that. Imperial horse delivery is at all stables. I don't think we need to read a giant dev note to understand that it's now available at all stables. Barrier of infestation is now a general quest instead of a weekly. They functionally removed the time gate portion uh, of this so that uh, it's going to be able to be completed much faster, obviously, than waiting uh, for resets. Season character ticket uh, we saw in the um, event section already, so we understand that. Uh, we can move on past that. Uh, we added they added the crafting recipe for the life crystal and vital crystal, so they can be crafted through processing instead of a quest. Um, so not quite as cumbersome talking to uh, homie out in land of the morning light anymore. You can just straight up do it, which is awesome. Uh, and then they have a new sensor uh, crafting recipe for the T10 Awakening. The idea here was to remove, well, the not remove because you still have the other options. It's an additional option, but to lessen the burden of, say, enhancing blue grade accessories for metal, Melody the Stars or needing the metal solvents to make other uh, pieces along with it. So now it's going to use ingots with it so you can kind of just get these. And then in addition, they increased the price on the Everlasting Herb to hopefully then uh, allow it to be a bit more obtainable. So in, in all likelihood, it's probably going to cost you more than, say, you know, making a try blue and getting Melody the Stars or uh, doing this stuff yourself. But you can kind of save yourself some time and or frustration uh, by using this method. So your overall setup is one Old Moon Sensor, uh, 300 Magic Lightstone Crystal, 400 Old Moon ca Alchemy Catalyst, as like an item you just get off a vendor instead, then a thousand copper ingot and uh, one thousand tin ingot. So um, should be potentially a bit, in, a bit easier to uh, get those if you are I don't know in a hurry or something. We have the new uh, item that was added to Paddock's Island, uh, and this is the DP slash evasion ring. Um, you can see at pen level, it's got twelve accuracy. Uh, 12 DP, and then it has a total of 25 evasion. Also, on a side note, when I, I know the plus like this was, you know, hidden stats because back in the day, stats were actually hidden. But, like, do you think we're at a point in the game where it hasn't been hidden for, I don't know, six years now where we could probably just put the total number of evasion 25, like, on all the items? Or, I don't know. I don't know why the formatting has to stay that way. I feel like it's actually super, super confusing for a brand new player to come in and then be like, why is it 12 and then plus 13? I understand as it goes up, it has, like, a base rate at that level plus the additional, but hidden stats just aren't a thing in this game. Anyways, not that super important, just something that I think is a little bit silly. Uh, as far as monster updates this week, they did increase at Thornwood and Tukunta, the regular ones, uh, the drop rate on lungs and leaves there. If you're trying to get that Orzeka, uh, should be a little bit easier for you. And we have some uh, UI updates and issue fixes, that sort of thing. Uh, so let's jump over to the Pearl Shop this week and take a look. First up, we have the Daily Special Pass. Obviously, we talked about this in the events page. It's 3,500 pearls, which I believe has been the same price 
uh, that we see on that item as we've had this event before. So is it a good value? I mean, yes, as long as these are items that make sense to you. Uh, as, I, as you'll see going through here, cron stones and enhancing in general is a heavy, heavy push from them. So obviously they've got some sort of data that shows that uh, to sell their pearls, they need to push more enhancement stuff. This one's kind of interesting that the premium pass pack it's 8910 pearls and it gets you the daily special pass so that 3500 pearl value and then the black spirit pass as well uh, which is the bonus items for um uh, for the season and these come together along with then an outfit box assigned with it and then you get a bonus 15 item drop scrolls uh you get five 300 xp scrolls and five blessed message scrolls this is like an okay value um if you were gonna buy both and you want a outfit too then you save a little bit on the outfit but uh, i wouldn't say it's an absolute necessity especially if you're not interested in either of the passes and you're only considering it because there's a bundle don't do it in that scenario we've got a season all in one pack 34 65 pearls it's got 100 artisans in it and a plus 16 inventory then your choice of a 30-day value pack 450 cron stones six mount skill change coupons or six theas orbs uh, then you're going to get a 60 stack 250 stacks 10 item drop scrolls and 40 memory fragments uh, this is a daily cronstone pack, which we just had a few weeks ago. It's the same price as it was a few weeks ago, 170 pearls, except now you get 200 cronstones a day instead of 100 cronstones. This is a ridiculously good value when we talk about pearl per cron. It's never been this low that I can ever recall uh, pearl per cron in general. Definitely not since the costume melting revamp at all. So if you're trying to grab these, you definitely want to jump on that. It resets daily, obviously. Uh, and this is going to be running for two weeks. Uh, so you could uh, potentially pick up was that 2800 uh, total in that amount of time for very, very cheap. Obviously, 2800 is not all that you want, but why not get it for as cheap as possible instead of cashing out at the vendor crons? We've got a Hepta premium pack available for 17850 pearls. It's got seven outfits as well as 2300 additional crons. So it's like seven and a half uh, outfits in the, or excuse me, well, over seven uh, outfits on there, giving you a bonus. 2300 is like another two and a half. That's what I meant to say on it. So that's a lot. Uh, with the triple premium pack is 8160 pearls. Uh, it's got three outfits uh, for you on their premium outfits and then another 700 cron bonus. As I can, as I was saying before, you, you can see where like they're really ramping up, pushing these crons and in general enhancing materials a lot. Uh, enhanced buff pack is 1125 pearls. Uh, you choose either the Blessing of Comasil, 15 day, or the Book of Old Moon of the same. You'll get 50 item drop scrolls, uh, five 300% scrolls, and five Blessed Message. We've got the Fine Steeds pack for 1350. Select two from the list below. You get the Heyte. Uh, pet, uh, 10 hour mount scrolls, eight of them, four mount skill change coupons, and there's a bonus, uh, five celerity drafts, five coursers aura, one courser training box, and five Laura's black warm tea. Uh, we have the weight limit plus 400 available in the shop. It's on a sale or anything. It's just there because it's not always there. It's 3,500 pearls if you want to grab it. Typically grabbing maids is the play there. Uh, we've got new pet, a uh, young Azure dragon pack. You can essentially get this in any assortment that you want with the different options. So it's 1100 pearls to get it. Obviously you get some feed with it and also some odd item drop scrolls. You'll see the pack listed again and again because it depends on uh, what actual pet pack you wanted. So like resistance to desert illness, hostility detection, um, auto fishing time or a taunt monster on there. And then what other subtype you want, weight limit increases probably the most popular one there. Uh, continuing what we've seen weeks past, uh, the past few weeks, the discounts on select storage, and this week it's going to be Valencia, Shikatu, and Sand Grain Bazaar. We've got an additional 20% discount on the campsite if you're looking to grab that. We've got discounts on family inventory and family weight at 15% off on both of those. Regular inventory and weight are getting a 25% discount off the category itself. The book of training pack, which we mentioned in the events page, 5 million silver. Uh, you can get this 10 times within the sales period on there, so 100 hours functionally if you're trying to pick that up. And then the weekly outfit uh, sale this week is the Nova Imperium Orta premium set it's 30 60 pearls per usual on the weekly outfit so there you have it for this week's pearl shop and patch notes let me know what you guys think about what's going on in the comments down below if you did enjoy the video be sure to like it if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos go live and if you'd like to catch me playing live there's a link to my twitch page in the description down below jump on over there drop a follow so you get notifications for that as well with that said that's going to be it for this one I want to thank everybody for watching and i will see you next time hey.